Hey everybody, uh, it is Mr. George and it is Wednesday, April 29th, and I want to kind of go over what we're going to do for tonight's class. Um, first part is I would like you guys to review uh, some of the geography of um, Eastern and Western Europe. So uh, I'll put the link here with the assignment. Uh, this is when we were back on um, the geography website, which shows up oops, here. So if we do, if we do Western Europe tonight, gives you the map of the different countries here. Okay, so France, over Germany. And then down here, you're going to take the quiz. So this is this is Western Europe. And then I want you to take a look at Eastern Europe. And just do the best you can with this. Again, this is really important to be familiar with where things are. So, you know, if you hear about something happening somewhere, you have an idea of you know where, you know, Romania is or Ukraine. Okay, so this um, so tonight we'll look at two different parts of Europe. We'll look at the western and eastern part. And after you review the map, you're going to click the start button and then take the quiz. Um, and I'll have the link on the uh, on the document. But the way the way to get to it is if you come back to our here, um, if you click on where it says Remember the math website was the one that when you click on it along the left hand side, it's going to give you an option for uh, world, world nations. And then that's where we get the geography of nations of the world. Okay. So at this point, we've done uh, North America, Central America, uh, South America. Um, and I believe we've also looked at uh, different parts of Africa. And now we're going to work our way through, through Europe tonight. So that'd be the first thing I want you to do. Is to look at is to look at that second one visit the photo section um, of the same website and I want you to look at Las Vegas Nevada okay so if you remember Las Vegas Nevada on on this website it gives you all the different parts of Nevada you could start with the first one the Hoover Dam um, and just practice reading the caption the caption of the words that are right below the picture and it gives you a picture of the Hoover Dam. And then click on Next. Again, same thing. Gives you inside of the Hoover Dam. This is what it looks like from looking down on it. Okay. And then once you get past the Hoover Dam, um, it's then going to start to bring you into, you know, other parts of Colorado. The index kind of brings you back to here. Um, and this is where it's going to give you, you know, what some of the pictures will look like. At, at, at nighttime. So as, so as far as, as that, so you will look at different countries in Eastern and Western Europe. You'll review the photo section of Las Vegas. Uh, if, you know, if, I'm not, you know if, if you've been there or not, uh, you may have a you know, better appreciation for it. But if you haven't been there, it's nice to kind of know, you know what's there. As well as um, yesterday's class, we looked at the different states of the country and now you know where Nevada is, okay? Uh, and then after you review the photos, um, I'd like you to read the story, Circus is Coming to Town, which is in page 104 to 105 in your student book. Uh, I also have attached the story. And then after you're done, as part of your assignment tonight that you'll pass in or share with me, you'll answer the questions on pages 106 to 107 in your book and again I'll also provide the questions to you in case you don't have your book and then the last thing is I would encourage you to look at these online resources uh, I've been um, we've had some assignments there I've encouraged you to use them I spent one class where I just went through each each of them I believe that was on April 20 uh, 21st the virtual field trip museum math skills which also brings us to the geography and then the photo section which is where we were tonight looking at looking at las vegas 
Okay, so it's kind of a lot of small things tonight. Uh, what I want to do next is I'm going to read the story to you and then just review the questions. Um, and then again, I'll be available during your scheduled class time if you have any questions through Google Voice or you could email me um, directly. Okay, so story for tonight is Circus Comes to Town. Donald Seastrunk never feared the jugglers until they upgraded from bean bags to bowling pins. By the movie theater, after a movie let out, excited crowds gathered around the most skilled jugglers, whose silk vests were as blue as the sky. Winking and smiling, the jugglers performed astonishing feats dozens of balls in the air at once, nifty behind the back and through the legs tricks. Even juggling blindfolded, word of mouth spread to neighboring towns. People from far away came to see the street performers. All seemed well and good, but with the jugglers' popularity came copycats, and so many of them. On the side streets, in quiet walkways, juggling copycats blundered through their simple routines. A ball or two rolling into the street was the worst of it at first. But when the very best jugglers switched to bowling pins to freshen up their act, the bad jugglers copied this too. For Donald Seastrunk, the juggling problem came to a head one May morning as he hurried from his car up the path to the library. Just as he thought he was safe, a stray bowling pin spiraled through the air and whomped him on the head. The next day, it was crazy at Town Hall too. Mayor Marjorie Arnold sighed at her desk. She had just read Donald Seastrunk's angry email, which Donald had sent to dozens of friends, the town council, and the mayor's office. This wasn't the first complaint the mayor had received about the jugglers. But what could she do? Some people were mad, but others loved the jugglers. After all, the town was practically famous now, and people were proud to be from the famous town. The biggest newspaper in the state capital had even written an article about the jugglers. And think of all the money the crowd spent at local stores. The mayor chewed her pen. She tapped her foot furiously. She sighed so strongly that important documents blew off her desk, and this made her sigh again. Whenever she found herself in trouble, Mayor Arnold liked to hold imaginary conversations with the golden cat statue on her desk. With another heavy sigh, she asked it for advice. Why not pass a law banning juggling in public, it seemed to say. The mayor can't just pass whatever law she wants, said Mayor Arnold. Laws are passed by the town council. With a groan, the mayor rose from her leather chair and stood at the window, looking at the trees in full bloom on the town green. One tree had a bowling pin caught in the branches. The mayor imagined the cat's voice dropping to a whisper. Why not order the police to find the jugglers for disturbing the peace? That's no good, the mayor said. She rested her forehead on the cool window and, and closed her eyes. What if the jugglers sue us? Then the case would go to court and the town could lose a lot of money. The golden cat statue made no reply. The mayor was by herself. She heard what sounded like the distant rumble of thunder. Thunder? There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Without taking her forehead off the window, Mayor Arnold opened her eyes. What she saw next made her jump up from jump up with a squeak. A crowd of people were marching up the long street, 
that led to Town Hall, and at the crowd's front was Donald C. Strunk himself. They pumped their fists in the air and waved signs. An anti-juggler protest. Mayor Arnold sighed. It was going to be a long day. All right, so now we have uh, the first four questions are multiple choice questions. So you can just write the letter, or if you want to practice, you can write the letter and the response next to each number. And if you're not sure what the answer is, you're going to have to go back and read the story, um, or just do the best you can. And then five, six, and seven are, all, are also multiple choice. When you get to number eight, nine, and ten, these are open responses. So you're going to have to complete each one of those with a full sentence. Okay? Do the best you can when you get to number ten and saying, support your answer using information from the passage. So this is asking you to answer the question, explain why the issue of the jugglers is so difficult for Mayor Arnold. So don't just, don't just answer it, answer it using information from the reading to support your answer. Okay, great. And if you have any questions during class time, I will be available uh, through Google Voice or you could just email me directly. All right, well, good luck.